Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Constance the Reader, and today is May 1st. It's time to wrap up everything I read, but I'm doing things a little bit different for this wrap up video. You will be seeing two for me. This one is going to be about all of the manga I read in April. If you watch any of my other videos, you know that I said that I really needed to read what I own. I know, crazy concept, right? Um, but especially if it's a series that I've continued to buy extra volumes of, like the newer releases, but I haven't read it yet. So obviously that's a lot. I was really successful. I was very happy. I read like 20 something volumes this month. So I figured it really kind of needed its own video, especially if you are someone who's following me like specifically for manga and anime related stuff. I want to give you your sep own separate video because <laughs> And then everything else I read that is not manga is gonna have its own video. And then I'm going to do the Naruto TBR game on that one since it'll be a lot shorter. Um, if you like either of those things, watch either of those things. If you just adore me, you will watch both. <laughs> and I hope you're that one because I think both will be great. So let's get straight into it. So I read a lot of manga for the month of April, really excited about it. I don't have these like, put on the shelf based on like loved it versus hated it so as I'm talking about it I might tell you what the pros and cons were uh but in general I liked I liked pretty much everything I read you will hear my thoughts so let's jump right into it all right so the first first volume of a series that I've continued to buy but I hadn't started at the time was Record of Ragnarok this was so good I really really liked this first volume in particular and I definitely will be reading the rest of the series. I just think it's a cool concept, uh, really interesting. So basically all the gods, gods that you know, some that you might not know, we're talking like Odin, Thor, Zeus. Um, then we're talking like Hindu gods, uh, other ancient like gods from the East that you might not have known about. It's not just like Jesus, you know. <laughs> Well, why would Jesus be there? I don't know. Maybe Jesus is in here. Who knows? I mean, is Jesus God? I'm not religious. Either way, all of those gods, deities, so on and so forth are like in a pantheon and they're all deciding if they're going to wipe out humanity and start fresh or whatever option there is. Well, the Valkyrie decides to say, look, let's not wipe out humanity. Let's do something a little different. How about we do this ancient like contest game whatever where gods versus humans now the gods say hell yeah we'll do that because of course we're going to obliterate the humans who challenge us there's just no way that they would win except the valkyrie has a little sneaky plan up her sleeve and i won't give any more away than that but it's really cool so the first contenders are thor versus lu vu and it's an epic showdown. It's not even done at the end, I don't think. I actually think it continues on to the second volume. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It's really cool. Very action-packed. It has funny moments. I like the characters. I like learning a little bit more about some gods and deities I've never heard of. Now, do I expect it like an in-depth history lesson? No, but that's okay. I still think a little sprinkle of information is cool, and if I'm interested, I'll do some more research. We shall see, but I liked this. I would definitely give this I don't know, sh should I rank them? Sh should I give them a like a number? I don't know. I don't want to say like, it's the first volume, so it's really hard to say, but I feel confident that I will rate this series as a whole pretty highly. And I know that that's pretty intense, but I, I, I feel confident that I can. Next, I read In the Clear Moonlit Dusk. I loved this so much. I thought it was so cute. I was really like annoyed with myself that I didn't read this when I first got it because it is so good. First of all, everybody's gorgeous. Okay, our two main characters, very, very cool. Obviously giving Nana, I liked it. Um, our main character, I believe it's Yoi, Yoi? I'm, no, I'm pronouncing it right, it's Y-O-I. So I apologize, but everybody calls her the prince in her school. She is just so cool, she's androgynous, um, but she is a girl. And a lot of people feel like because of her androgyny or like kind of being a little bit more on the masculine side, they they call her Prince, but they know that she's a woman, but some people do confuse her with a man, it's fine. Um, and then she meets Ichimura. 
apparently he's never seen her before. I can't remember if he's new or something like that, but basically she thinks he's fine as hell. And he's really intrigued too. He's like, I'm interested in you. And it's like the two princes of their school, basically these really attractive people that everyone has a crush on, um, may very well get into a relationship. And it was just very cute. It's high school, but it had funny moments. I think it's just a really cool art style. And I definitely will be continuing on reading this. That is for sure. Next, we have My Love Mix-Up. I loved this so much. I, I already pulled out the second volume. I will be reading it soon, hopefully today, if I'm feeling in the mood to read. I love this. So we have three characters. Really, it's our main character here. Aoki, I think that's, I think that's how you pronounce his name, has a crush on her. He asks to borrow her eraser when there's a test. And unfortunately, it has the name, he believes it has the name of this character written on the eraser. And uh, he's like, oh man, I really like her, but now I know that she likes this guy, this sucks. Well, he sits in front of him and he realizes that he has an eraser with his name written on it, which I, I guess is like something that you can do for your crush. Um, it's a cute little thing, you know, uh, you know, like when we were in high school, you know, you put your name plus so-and-so, Connie plus Devin with a heart. Um, that's essentially what happened. So he gets the wrong impression of him thinking that he has a crush on him. He doesn't want him to know her secret because he's like, well, that's not fair. We're friends. I don't want to expose her. So it's a love mix up because now he has to pretend that he has a crush on him to not expose her. And it is extremely funny. I think this is such a cute story uh it, it, and it's and it's just so hilarious I laughed out loud quite a few times the ending was shocking of the first volume which made me go I have to read the rest of this because now I need to know what happens because it's even more of a mix-up and I just loved it I think it's funny I think it's cute I will be reading the rest and I don't know I would definitely I mean did I say I was gonna rate now I can't remember I, I would rate it highly let's just leave it at that the series I think I will like in general I also read Imakoi now I'm in love. So now the interesting thing and why I wanted to talk about this right, right after those two is I think that this has the two things I like, the things I liked about In the Clu Clear Moonlit Dusk and My Love Mix Up, I think this kind of mashes those things together in a way that I did enjoy. And then it also reminds me of one I'll be talking about later, which is a How Do We Relationship. But this was really cute. It does have a bit of insta love, which I'm not always the fan of, but they're high schoolers. It makes sense. Basically, Satomi, she's on her way to school. She's on the subway or on the train and a man assaults her. Disgusting. But Yagyu, I think that's how you pronounce it, steps in, stops her from being further assaulted by this man. Disgusting. And because they go to the same school, she's determined to at least tell him, like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that you did that for me. And I would like to be your friend. Things happen to where it doesn't quite come out the way she wants it to, or he has responded to her in a weird way, just very awkward. But in the end, sparks fly and they end up in a relationship. So it has these little elements from both of the ones I talked about previously that I really liked. And I can't wait to finish it. I think it's gonna be really cute. It's definitely giving like kind of grumpy, and then like the sweet cinnamon roll vibe. I do like that. I wouldn't say that I uh, reach for that, that trope all the time, but I, I don't hate it. So if I, if it's there, I like it. Next, now I don't really know how to talk about this one. <laughs> and that's Berserk. So I've never watched Berserk. And anytime someone talks about B Berserk, because I was interested in it, even though I'm someone who doesn't mind spoilers, for some reason I have avoided people talking about their thoughts about Berserk. I'm not sure why. I, I can't give you a good reason. But I finally read the first volume. I t right now own the first 10. So we're going to see how I like the series. But I've always been told bloody, gory, kind of sad and depressing. Definitely gave me that in the first volume. So our main character, Guts, he's like a mercenary I think it would be a good way to describe Guts. Um, he's out for revenge, but he's also cursed. He's trying to run from this curse or at least discover more information. Um, he isn't necessarily motivated to, like, if he sees an injustice, like, I'm going to stamp that out because I don't like injustice. I could be wrong, at least from this first volume. The It, it kind of seemed like the motivation was actually more along the lines of, like, I just can't stand that. I can't stand that stuff. So fuck you. I'm gonna fuck you up. 
you're being a little disrespectful. I don't really like it. Fuck you. It's not like I am the hero. Does that make sense? And yeah, a lot of shit happens in this. A lot of shit happens in this. It was crazy. Uh, it was a lot. But I liked it. I will be continuing on with the series. But I'm glad I did not invest in like the huge uh, hardcover deluxe editions just because I don't think I, I need that. I also don't have the space. But I like the singles. It's nice. I will be continuing. But yeah, bloody. That's all I know. And we're in this together. We're in this together. I will be finishing it. I've decided that I'm going to go with free written for the pronunciation. I still think I'm wrong. But it was really cute. I liked this series. Now, I feel like I didn't really know exactly what this was about, but I enjoyed it. But it's also kind of sad. So basically, our main character, the person we're following, is Freerin. She is an elf, which means she's essentially immortal. She lives for a very long time. Uh, many years ago, with her band of adventurers, they uh, took down the Demon King and brought peace to the land. And since then, it's just been them kind of living their life doing their thing. Sometimes she shows up 10, 20 years to see them. And of course they're aging and we're kind of meeting some of them after one has died. The others are getting old. Um, she, now this one, I don't know how old, I don't know how the dwarves age. I don't know how he ages cause he has a huge beard, <laughs> but, um, other people are getting old and they're dying and they're on their deathbeds. And one of these people asks Freerin when she's visiting to take on an apprentice. She does, she agrees, even though it's kind of like a trick. And now it's like we're getting a whole new adventure. So it's sad because the, you know, death, the reality of death, aging. Um, she does have emotion, but I feel like people think that Freerin as an elf is kind of cold and that she doesn't care. But she then starts to realize like, I didn't really know them. I didn't know them on a personal level. And I, I regret that. I wish I would have gotten to know them. So we are kind of getting to know them from her memories of their experience together. And it's really lovely. So there are seven volumes right now that I own. I am going to be continuing on with the series. I think eight and nine come out this year, but I'm not sure how long the series is. But so far, so good. Sad, but I'm liking it. Then we have Mashal. This was hilarious. I absolutely will be continuing on with the series because I think it is so freaking good. So main character, Mash, he is not someone who has magical powers. It, as I've said many times, it's a combo of One Punch Man and Harry Potter. Uh, very, very good. Very funny, in my opinion. Basically, um, it seems like the world that they're living in, it, it, more people are magic users than someone who doesn't have magic. So it's not like how in the other story, witches and wizard wizards are separate from humans and you certainly do not want to show that you have magic, that's against the rules. Here, you wouldn't want anyone to know that you don't have magic, which is exactly what happens with Mash. So I think it's his grandpa knows that Mash doesn't have magic, has tried to keep him secret, you know, from people. He always tells him, don't go out without me. But unfortunately, Mash does. He gets exposed. And somehow he ends up going to the magical school where people don't quite understand and believe him when he says, I don't know how to do, I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z. They're like, oh no, fighting spirit. And it's very funny. So somehow, a ma someone who doesn't have magic is able to not even really trying hard, by the way, to convince people that, hey, I fit in here. I should be fine. Uh, and it's really good. Very funny. I've laughed out loud several times. My husband has started watching the series and he really likes it. So in general, I will I will be continuing this. I have the first 10 volumes of the series so far. Next, I read... Oh. Next, I read Spy Family, finally. Now, I watched the first episode of the anime and I thought it was really good. I really like the manga too. So... Again, another one I will be continuing. I already have volumes two and three out by my sofa because I want to read that soon. But yeah, really good. Basically, our main character has a mission. Um, basically, he needs to get a daughter and get a wife and infiltrate this, this like school and he so he can get close to like, I don't know, the principal or something. And 
weirdly he ends up adopting Anya who was experimented on so she has telepathy and he ends up marrying an assassin who and, and nobody knows what's really going on except for Anya who can read everyone's mind but it's very very cute very interesting you got some badass moments but overall yeah it's pretty wholesome and I like that so I will be continuing on with the series. Next I read Die Dark. I really liked this. So far there are five volumes that I own that are out right now and it was very interesting. So this is about our main character Sanko. He is a teenager. This also takes place in space by the way and he is like cursed or something. He has this like demonish pack with him that turns into weapons and all this other stuff and he's just kind of like floating amongst the galaxy. And the thing though is, is if you were to steal one of his bones, you could give it to, I think, whoever put the curse on him and then you could get a wish. So of course he's trying to find out more about that, but also he has to stop people from trying to kill him and take his bones. And that's about the most I can say about it because it was definitely like a fever dream almost, but I liked it. It was very, very cool. The art style is very dark. There's moments that are pretty gory and I liked it. And I will be continuing on with the series. I would recommend Die Dark. So next I read Jealousy and this pretty, pretty filthy, pretty dirty. Nothing is blurred, ha lots of sex, not all consensual, especially not in the second volume, but Jealousy is interesting. So I didn't realize until the second volume that what I was seeing, you're seeing, you're seeing this from two different, uh, it's two different timelines. So I was a bit confused reading this one, but once I read the second volume and I realized, okay, so we see present day of this character whose name is Yuichi, I think, and he has a daughter. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then you see the past, which is him when he was younger before present day, obviously. That kind of threw me off because I was kind of not understanding what was going on. But in general, very interesting. So yes, lots of sex. This was wrapped in plastic, y'all. So if you're interested in reading it, just know it is, this is 18 plus for sure. Basically our main character somehow kind of gets involved with the Yakuza, but not really. He becomes infatuated with uh, the Yakuza boss of the Hanamura family and he really wants to sleep with him so he kind of gets into all of these little random things like the most random thing to get the attention of the Yakuza boss and it's just wild it's just a wild ride what he's what he's getting into so what we see when he's like getting into all this stuff is like in the 80s <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what to make of what the fuck is going on with this sometimes, but I don't hate it. I did not hate the first volume. As soon as I finished it, I was like, I really want to read the second one. So I did, which we'll be getting to. But the first volume, mm -hmm. this is four volumes, I believe. I own four, so I will be reading the four. I def So now after reading the second one, I'm even more interested to see how our main character got to where he is in present day. Because I have a theory I do have a theory and if my theory is right I'm gonna be really sad <sighs> and it makes sense that that would actually be the outcome we will see because I will read the next two in the month of May and you will get my thoughts but yeah jealousy was interesting next I read how do we relationship so if you watched my last video I'd already kind of said like I'm definitely going to read the second volume that I own but I'm probably not going to collect this series anymore um Basically, we have two main characters. It is Miwa and Seiko. Miwa and Seiko. These are like young adults in college, always have had feelings for women. Uh, she has never dated anyone before, though. She has. The thing that was like not very pleasant is just the not understand. Well, I mean, it, it's in the title, right? How do we relationship? So we've got two people, young people one seemingly very insecure very very insecure always questioning herself questioning what's going on um then Seiko is a little bit more she's not like that she's a bit more out than Miwa even though they both eventually come around and tell people like hey we're in a relationship but she seems to have a bit more 
experience dating people and hooking up with people so it's just like trying to navigate her which I really do like the way it's done because she's never she has had moments where she tries to pressure her but they have a conversation she explains herself and she says look don't do that and she does listen but there's there's a lot of like silly emotional relationship issues that I'm like I think at 33 I just am like, please get over it. Please move on or don't date each other. Like, I don't care. So I like it. I will be continuing with what I own. I don't think I will collect this because it doesn't seem like a series that I will come back to just because it's like everyday angst. I don't hate that, but it's not as interesting in this one. So not bad, but we're, we're going to see what we're going to see what we think as we continue on with the with the series. Next, I finally read Momo of the Blood Taker. This was really good. I will definitely be continuing on with the series, especially because I have four volumes now. Basically, we start off with this very bloody case. Uh, some people are chopped up and propped up and they're drained of blood. So you know we're dealing with monsters. We're, you know we're dealing with vampires. Uh, there's a detective who is kind of well-known, not necessarily well-liked, but well-known. And he is taking priority on some of these cases. He's trying to solve this mystery because back in the day, something, someone close to him ended up in the same scenario. And it's kind of like discovering vampires. He's trying to get, you know, he's trying to avenge the death of this person that was killed by a vampire, but he doesn't actually know whether they ex exist, right? So like this person that he really cared about was treated in the way that he has seen these people treated now. Um, kind of just no regard for human life. So he gets a really crazy introduction to the life and the world of vampires. But Momo is a little bit different. And that's where we end with him having to deal with, now having to work with a vampire, just not the one he's after. And I liked it. I definitely will be continuing on with the series. Only thing I don't like is that Momo is like 200 years old, but she's in the body of a child. Why? And she, she kind of like pushes up on the adult. Why do we have to do that? Why can't she just be an adult looking 200 year old? I don't know. I don't know. But still like it. I also read Donuts Under a Crescent Moon. I really liked this. This is an adult office romance. These two women both work in the same office. She obviously very pink, very frilly, very feminine. A lot of people discount her and uh, kind of treat her like she's a ditz and oh she's pretty so it's okay we'll just let her like fumble through life and not turn things in on time even though she really is determined to be taken seriously whereas her co-worker mostly wears dark clothes doesn't always smile she's just like a normal person but everyone treats her like oh she's so cold and their little kind of budding romance is very sweet so this is four volumes and I really really like it I will be finishing this series in the month of May I, I feel very strongly about it I know I know I say I'm gonna do a lot of the time but I I really like this I already pulled the second volume out so I can read it they're very short too so I don't see why I should have any problem and the last first volume that I ended up reading was Platinum End so this is really good this is by the same mangaka of Death Note and Death Note's really great I I haven't read it I do own all of them now but I did watch the anime and I really really liked it I believe this was also an anime which just from the artwork alone in the manga it's beautiful like I I know that if to watch this it'll be delicious so pretty but this is really cool so basically our main character Mirai I think that's how you say his name um crappy life crappy life he's like some some age in high school I'm, I'm not sure if he's a senior or if he's like just about to be a senior uh it's about to be like the end of the year or spring break or something like that and he wants to take his life. His life has been really miserable since the death of his parents. And when he takes his step off of the side of a building, he is saved by an angel. And an angel basically says, hey, I'm here to save you. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to save you. I'm going to make you happy. Um, doesn't give him all the details for why the angel is doing this. But we then find out that there have been 12 other people that have been saved in some way or at least um kind of told of the existence of you know the angel itself that hey hi 
and now we're in a contest and it's time for you guys all to compete because we need to eliminate some people and the winner will be a god or the god a god you know whatever very interesting i liked it i can see how some characters remind me of other characters from death note but i'm really looking forward to finishing this so this is a completed series i can't remember how long this series is it might be 13 volumes but it's completed so i can't wait to finish it now i'm not making a promise i'm going to finish this one in the month of may but I think I should get pretty far. It's really good. And now for everything else. So I read volume 11 of Call of the Night, really enjoying it. Uh, like where the story is going, but don't know when this will end. Uh, but I'm liking it. It's really, really cool. I finally read the second volume of Our Dreams at Dusk. Absolutely hate this little character. <laughs> I do not like him at all. The, I don't understand their motivation, but I understand they're frustrated but they still pissed me off. I did not like how they treated like our main character as of these last two volumes. So not bad for a volume. So I will be finishing it, but hopefully I don't have to see this character again. Volume three of A School Frozen in Time. I talked about this on my vlog. I am not totally enjoying this series so far. I am really confused. We started out with eight students. They're trapped in a school that's frozen in time and they've supposedly got to figure out who killed themselves but now it's kind of slowly turning into like all these kids have some trauma and I don't even know if their original thought of how they get out of this is even true so it's only four volumes the the fourth volume is the longest which is very very frustrating to know but it's okay it's okay I don't think that I will finish the series and feel like it was my favorite though unfortunately volume two of jealousy so still lots of fucking let me tell you they are getting it on not a lot of consensual sex going on in here there's a few moments where there is but trigger warning for assault uh but still interesting definitely like to see where it's going I actually really like the wife in this book uh she she and his assistant basically his second in command are my two favorite characters I also like him but I'm a little lost on what's going on with him and then I finally read volumes three and four of kaiju number eight these are so freaking good I am genuinely enjoying the hell out of this series I'm glad that I finally picked it back up it's still funny it's still a really wild ride in my opinion uh, but I liked it, especially some of the characters that were meaning we're getting more background on them. So I have volumes five and six. Six just recently came out. Um, I will be picking those up soon. I actually kind of would like to pick them up this month and just kind of finish what I have. We will see. But this is really good. Kaiju are monsters. Somehow a human becomes half kaiju, half human. But he is working with the task force that kills kaiju. So it's a very, very awkward situation. But the characters are funny very very cool weapons very cool powers like their backstories and i'm just so happy with it so i enjoy this i would recommend kaiju number eight and that's it that is all the manga that i read in the month of may i really enjoyed what i ended up reading some obviously more than others but overall i would recommend every single thing that i read i think it was really good obviously some i'm not finished with so the four volume series i should be done with them hopefully in the month of may and i could give you a better like review of what i thought about the series as a whole uh but yeah thank you so much for watching i really hope that you still tune into the next video that will be just regular books that are not manga because i did read a lot of those too thank you very much uh but thank you so much for watching if you liked the video please like the video if you like like it subscribe with the notification bell all that good stuff follow me on my other social media it's in the description box below thank you so much for watching have a good day. Goodbye.